سماك الله يا أصلا هذا الاتهام هذا الاعتداء على المسجد الأقصى صباح اليوم من عضو الحكومة الاحتلالية العنصري من قبل هو يشكل أن هناك عنوان لدى هذه الحكومة المتطرفة The reason why Netanyahu postponed his trip to the United Arab Emirates is because Netanyahu today, with an extremist far-right coalition government, is going to be a delicate balance for him. Ben Giver and his band of religious zealots don't just want Al-Aqsa, but they want to build more illegal settlements in Palestine. If you remember back in 2020, the so-called Abraham Accords brought many countries in the Sunni world to establish ties with Israel, countries like Bahrain, United Arab Emirates, Sudan and even Morocco. With the extremists in power now through a coalition in Israel, Arab leaders are already expressing their outrage and this year has only just begun. And it's not just the Arab world voicing outrage, but also opposition leader Yair Lapid, who until last week was Israel's Prime Minister. He warned that Ben Giver's visit and any plans to change the status quo would endanger human lives. It's going to be interesting to see what happens next. Netanyahu is not the Netanyahu of 2020. The guy is desperate today to foil the prosecutors who are out to nail him on corruption charges. And there's actual far-right religious lunatics in his coalition government who want to ignite conflict in the region. This is going to be extremely hard for him to control. Ben Giver, the minister who visited the Al-Aqsa compound, is the leader of the Jewish Power Party. He's also the minister of national security. He has a conviction for incitement to racism and supporting a terrorist organization. He now oversees not only the Israeli police, but also other law enforcement agencies, including the border police, who are active in the occupied West Bank. And what's really strange about all this is, it appears all the criminals are in power in Israel. Four of the top five party leaders of the incoming coalition, Netanyahu, Arya Deri, Basil Smotrich and Ben Gevir, have either been arrested, indicted, convicted or served time in prison for charges of corruption or incitement to racism. My gut instinct tells me there's a hidden hand which is controlling Netanyahu and his coalition government. All of them want to save themselves from some form of crime or another, so they'll do whatever it takes to make the deep state happy. The Arab world and friends of Palestine should know there's not a two-state solution to this problem between Palestine and Israel. In fact, the two-state solution is dead and the emergence of an Israeli regime that's determined to drive as many nails as possible into its coffin will make the messy atmosphere in occupied territories even worse. How long will Arab and Muslim countries then continue diplomatic ties with Israel? How long will they be able to defend diplomatic relations at the cost of persecuted Muslim and Christian Palestinians? Israel is showing its true face today. It's run by criminals who are manipulated, always has been. <laughs>